Hey, hello everyone, welcome back to another episode and here I am here with, you are here with your friendly dietitian and public health specialist JJ and I'm going to share with you today about cancer and cancer prevention. So I'm going to go over some risk factors, some possible causes and then I'll go over some um, remedies, some natural things that can help and I'll also go into some of the side effects of traditional medication and then I'll have a whole list of, of some natural things that could help. Uh, just to note, I'm not giving you specific treatment guidelines here. If you want specific step-by-step uh, -step guidelines and you want someone to go through a whole process with you, then you will need to contact me privately. Um, I cannot do this over a, a YouTube video. I have to do that in person um, with you. <clears throat> so what I'm going to talk about is things that there are research for. I, all these things that I get, it's from either books or from articles uh, in the on the internet. So for example, this one. I have the article here for you and on my computer I have opened some of the books that I use. So the one book that I really like is Clinical Naturopathy, uh, an evidence-based guide to practice. It's published by Elsevier <coughs> and it's a 2019 book and the other one is an encyclopedia of herbal medicine. But I have about 20 books. I have another one there by a Dr. Willem Safontaine, New Nutrition. I also use textbooks that are used while studying as well, which I don't have here in my office, but I have them at home. So I, I have a broad range of information and places where I get this, these articles and the information from. So it's not just sucking it from my thumb or getting it out of the air or somewhere. It's evidence-based and it's coming from a specific place. So let's start by some of the risk factors. So some of these you, if most people know. <laughs> the smoking is one of them, alcohol, obesity, uh, excessive UV exposure, and a low intake of fruit and vegetables, low fiber intake, high intake of processed meats, and um, products that contain lots of nitrogen, nitrosamines, nitroamines, uh, which is in the preserved um, foods so it's like the the cold meats, the, the dried meats, the processed meats, and then highly salted foods as well. So there are also genetic factors. Um, stress is another one. You get your environment as well, your occupation. So there are numerous, numerous places where you could be exposed to something. So I, as I said, genetics as well, viruses, infections, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, so where your mitochondrial DNA is getting mutated and, oh, it's being depleted. So when there's a change, when cells have become programmed to do something differently by a change in the genes and then it replicates, that is another one. So environmental effects, your immune system not, not functioning like it should. Uh, you have exposure in your environment, as I said, like for example, air cons, paint, anti-inflammatory coatings as well. Your cell cycle mitosis malfunction, so where your, the checkpoints that your cells go through when they replicate have mutations and then abnormal cells develop. So the abnormal cell is the cancer cell. So one way to quickly deal with this is with fasting. So fasting, you are not eating anything, maybe just water or tea, and then your body has a chance to send all its immune cells to the places where there are these um, cells which function has changed or which has mutated. So then your body can go there, it can um, activate its natural killer cells it can auto start the autophagy cycle as well eat eat these cells and then use those cells as energy so your body can use 
killed or recycled cells and put them back as energy. So you are healing and you're using your dead cells as energy. How fantastic. So oxidative damage as well. So when there's a lot of reactive oxygen species, reaction, reactive nitrogen species going around in your body, causing lots of inflammation, this is also a risk factor for, um, for cancer. And these come from things that we are putting in. So your food, for example. <clears throat> Then mind-body connection, so positive thinking has an effect. People who are really negative all the time have a lot of stress and then your body degrades much faster. When you are have a positive mind and you, have, you, you practice religion, you believe in something, you believe in, in God and you, you have faith, and you have something that you are working towards and believing in that helps you be healthier. There's also research for that. Okay, and then exposure to specific carcinogens. So with technology, we are exposed to more radiation, to more waves, and these can be linked to cancer as well. So in this little article, I also noted something so they also have specific metals that might be carcinogenic carcinogenic nickel cadmium arsenic your nitrosamines which i mentioned trichloroethylene aryl amines benzopropane aflatoxins and reactive oxygen species so aflatoxins you can get on some food items so for example peanuts can have aflatoxin they have very strict import and export guides around aflatoxin so look out for these as well. Cadmium you find in batteries, for example. So you find these things around us, these chemical carcinogens. Then we have the physical carcinogens like the ultraviolet light, radiation, uh, exposure to it. Then, as I said, the viruses, so for example, Epstein-Barr virus, the HPV virus, the Helicobacter pylori, which is predominantly in your intestinal tract, in your stomach hepatitis so there are quite a lot of viruses that can also be linked to um, to cancer as a DNA replication metabolic reactions in your body and chronic inflammation and chronic inflammation is linked directly to what you are eating drinking and what you are exposing yourself to so DNA repair genes can participate in repairing damaged dna like i said when you are going through a fasting cycle your your dna can be repaired it's not a permanent thing you can repair it and then they grade it they look at the site of origin of the cancer and that gives it the name so for example you have uh, blastoma which is in uh, fetal tissue adenocarcinoma originates in the gland cells carcinoma epithelial tissue lymphoma occurs in, in in lymphatic tissue so you have different ones myeloma and bone marrow so you have different origins and that gives the, the specific cancer the name and the characteristic of the cancer cells is its rapid proliferation of cells so it really very quickly and autonomously by itself replicates its own cells therefore growing the mass so it's a a cell that has mutated, that has changed its function, that switched on its own replication, and then it becomes bigger very quickly and it forms a mass. So that's a cancer mass. So it's also linked to insufficient apoptosis. So when your body is not able to efficiently and effectively kill the mutated or the damaged cells, your body has to do this. And when it is not able to, then this damaged, these damaged cells keep on growing. So you need for example, proper sleep, where you need your eight hours of sleep, you need your 10 to 12, between 10 and 12, you need, you need that sleep so that your brain can switch off, that your brain can clean out. So you have your lymphatic system and your glymphatic drainage, and those have to drain and refresh and repair so that you can go through the cycle of apoptosis and get rid of the damaged cells. So cancer cells also have an altered metabolism. So therefore, things that we are eating can feed the cancer. So that's where fasting can also help because you're cutting off that supply. And then genomic instability. So inst inst 
stability in a gene, which can also be stabilized by specific things that you are introducing and eating, for example, more fruit and vegetables. So cancer cells can also have this immortalization, so growth beyond, beyond what your body can then stop. So at that point, you need to either cut it out, remove it, or go through the, the radiation treatment. And it has been also proven, there are studies that show that following a plant-based lifestyle in conjunction with your cancer treatment can improve your outcome, can decrease all of the negative effects, the side effects there are. Okay. Then little things that can warn you about cancer. This, it doesn't say that you have it. It's just warning signs, could be warning signs. Unexplained weight loss, thickened uh, lump or thickening in a certain area, uh, unexplained chronic fever, fatigue or lethargy, which doesn't get better with rest, pain, specific pain in a specific area, prolonged pain in a specific area, skin changes, reddening, itching, changes in your moles, excessive hair growth, jaundice, so all of these can be warning signs, change in your bowel or your urinary habits, sores that don't heal, white patches inside your mouth or your tongue, unusual bleeding or discharge, um, trouble <clears throat> swallowing or a narrowing, you can feel it's difficult to swallow it, painful swallowing and coughing and hoarseness for prolonged time. Then side effects of chemotherapy, you get mouth ulcers, diarrhea, constipation, um, intestinal permeability, so meaning gut leakage, so lots of diarrhea. You have enteropathy or enteritis, which you struggle with. Neutrophilia, anemia, fibrosis, fatigue, memory loss, weight loss, weight gain, <laughs> stress, anxiety, problems with your nerves, um, with your hair, your very rapid, rapidly dividing cells as like your hair and your skin, peripheral neuropathy, you lose your, your feeling and cardiomyopathy so linked to your heart. So these are some things that are side effects of the, the conventional chemotherapy. So there are many natural things that can help for this. I'm not going to go through those specific ones. <clears throat> so let me just get where I am here. Ha. So they are the conventional treatments, so mainly chemotherapy. Then you have also natural treatments that have been approved and they have minimal, minimal side effects and there are specific herbal medicines for this. So this is what this article that I have in my hands is about. So I'm having it in my hand because these names are very difficult. So the first medicinal plant is the Cassia fistula, which is called a uh, golden shower. And it's the family of Fabaceae. And what it does, it has purgative and laxative properties, and it can help with leukemia, leukoderma, diabetes, pruritus, and it's a source of naturally occurring bioactive compounds. Uh, I'm just quickly going to go through some of these because these are approved ones. So terminalia, so it's from a tree, tree terminalia, uh, cissus quadrangularis, which is another plant. These are a lot of the tropical plants. You get these in India as well. The specific article is focused on uh, Indian uh, origin. I'll go through some more available ones worldwide. Uh, Eclipta alba, Gymnema sylvestra, it's found in the forest, it's another tree. Many of these are trees. And you get periwinkle, Pacific yew, Himalayan may apple. I'm using just the common names of some of them now. Um, mulberry, some of the crocus family, lily family. Uh, there's a happy tree from China, the mulberry mulberry tree holy basil has been used turmeric different kinds of turmeric as well that you find around the world custard apple the anona family they are very strongly linked to and have strong anti-cancer effects so the anona family include the custard apple 
and soursop, soursop especially, both the fruit and the leaves, extremely medicinal. The mallow family of plants as well, yellow wood, uh, java brucia, then pepper, salon iron wood, tar vine or hogweed, the curcuma that I've mentioned, turmeric. They are, there are some of those that have been specifically used in treatment and there's drugs made from these. I have the names of the drugs here as well, but I won't mention them. If you want to know some of them, which plant the drug comes from, please contact me. I'll share you this for you. I'll show it to you very quickly. You have the table here. <clears throat> if you need this, if you want it, I can just um, send it on to you this article I have it downloaded as well I can also share the the textbooks with you if you would need the textbooks so that is some of the things from from this article uh, then you also get some other key treatments so they also use green tea resveratrol in the skin of grapes quercetin which you find in a lot of fruits and vegetable vitamin D uh, there's folate, B, vitamin B6. So the genistein in green tea. Vitamin A, zinc as well. Then I have some other ones here. So as I've talked about fasting, that increases your autophagy and can use these uh, recycled cells or damaged or dead cells as actual energy for your body. Then fruit, which has a lot of enzymes, it helps to keep your immune system balanced and active so that it can, can work. It's very anti-inflammatory. It can help to get rid of the reactive oxygen species and the reactive nitrogen species. It can help to neutralize any toxins that are in, in your digestive system. So going to those viruses and the aflatoxins and the bolds and the heavy metals your the fruits can the fiber in it the phytoactive compounds in it can bind and can get rid of these as well the phytonutrients the green leafy vegetables have lots of minerals which can help to bind to heavy metals which are damaging and get rid of heavy metals so you get these heavy metal detoxes with green juices that will get rid of these toxins so things like kale, broccoli, spinach, uh, you have beet greens, so all of these green leafy ones. You can e even add herbal ones like comfrey, like rosemary, uh, basil. Let me just see what's on my list here. So those are all green leafy, all the herbs, all the spices, all those greens you can add in um, into your, your diet and this will help to to get rid of these toxins, the heavy metals especially, and it boosts the enzymes, the natural enzymes in your body. These natural enzymes help to break down more of the harmful substances. It can also help you to lose, your f lose fat mass, and in the fat mass you have stored a lot of vitamins, minerals, and you also store toxins in your fat, and this will help also get rid of those. That's why it's not so great to lose a lot of weight in a short amount of time, because you're releasing a lot of these things into your body, and they can be toxic to your body as well. So just be careful with that. Then mushrooms. Mushrooms are fantastic. There's research about many different mushrooms, and they are targeted to different kinds of cancers. They also help to modulate your immune system. They're extremely antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial. Uh, mushrooms are really, really fantastic. Some of them are also analgesic to so take away your pain. As I said, antimicrobial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory. They support your immune system. They can be antipyretic, which means bringing down a fever. They increase also autophagal cell production. So you have more cells that can go around your body and kill these uh, cells or cancerous cells or mutated cells, damaged cells that are going to cause problems around your body. They also increase your glutathione, your GSH, which is directly linked to disease and disease risk. The more glutathione you have or the GSH you have, the more 
you can fight disease. The same with superoxide dismutase and GST, which are anti-cancer. They break down any of the, the harmful products that might damage your body. So shiitake, good for breast, liver, melanoma, and prostate cancer. Chaga, specifically cervical. And chaga is one of the best for modulating your hormones balancing out your hormones, balancing out your immune system. Mushrooms are extremely balancing. They bring your body back into a balance and back into a stable um, place where you can heal. Then, yeah, as I said, chaga cervical, lion's mane, gastric and liver cancers, maitake, leukemia, prostate, colorectal, breast, liver, lung. So these can be used to help with these. Inoki, good for lymphoma and prostate cancer, cordyceps, lung lymphoma, leukemia, reishi, leukemia, liver, lung, prostate, sarcoma, oyster mushroom, sarcoma, turkey tail, leukemia, cervical cancer, breast cancer, gastric cancer, prostate cancer, lung and liver. So maitake, turkey tail, reishi are some of the best as, along with shiitake. They're also extremely antiviral. So if it was a virus that's causing the cancer, then the virus will be eliminated with the mushroom and therefore the cancer will then start to disappear as well. So it depends on what the cause of the cancer is. So as I always try to focus on is the cause, I try to go back to the natural cause. It's what you will see in a lot of the homeopathy or the naturopathy textbooks or books is you go back to the cause you don't treat the symptom you don't take away just the symptom you look for the cause and you treat the underlying cause and then that will make you a, a more have more holistic health and heal you as a person not just take away that symptom that you have then other products that have been used and that uh, in herbal medicine to treat or to help with cancer things like cardamom cinnamon clove coriander basil allspice so you see there's lots of spices lots of herbs caraway cumin dill rosemary saffron thyme garlic ginger turmeric these are really strong uh, antimicrobial anti-inflammatory antiviral property they have very strong properties they also boost your your um, production of immune cells and your autophagial cells so that your body can fight disease and they go after these reactive oxygen species reactive nitrogen species and they can get rid of these as well and they are anti-inflammatory inflammation is a big cause of disease so it's caused by cellular infl inflammation nitric oxide the reactive oxygen species reactive nitrogen species and it can cause the progression promotion and growth of tumors so you want anti anti-inflammatory foods you want to follow an anti-inflammatory lifestyle which is a plant-based lifestyle whole foods including lots of spices lots of green leafy veg lots of fruits for those enzymes and the phytonutrients lots of spices lots of seeds sprouts you want to include all of these things into your your lifestyle into your eating so that you have the most anti-inflammatory most antiviral most antibacterial intake that you could have another great one is something like a pumpkin seed which is anti-parasitic uh, coconut which is antibacterial antimicrobial and as I said ginger uh, bromelain from pineapples, curcumin from turmeric, and you get the different kinds of turmeric as well. These are all linked to better disease outcomes and better health. Echinacea is another one. Ginseng is another one. Shizandra root is another one. That's astragalus plant family too. These are all part of the herbal remedies the rose family as well rose hips and you want to also take things in that can balance your hormones because some of the the cancers are hormonally linked so your mushrooms can help to balance out your hormones as well so you'll see shiitake chaga uh, maitake 
reishi, turkey tail, they balance out your hormones so they will in turn then be good for and help with cancer because they balance out your hormones. They balance out the estrogen progesterone balance, bringing down the estrogen and bringing up the progesterone a little. The progesterone is what makes you feel happy and the positive and good. The estrogen is linked to proliferation of cells because um, the estrogen has to make this, the cervical lining rapidly increase to prepare for implantation of the egg for pregnancy. So estrogen causes rapid cellular proliferation. So lots of estrogen in your body can then lead to cancer cells exploding and really um, expanding and growing very, very fast. So then sugar and salt. So processed sugar, uh, sugar that you find in box for in products on the shelf, De try to decrease this processed sugar, concentrated sugar, try to decrease that your intake of those and increase in decrease your intake of uh, purified salt. So purified salt, purified sugar, bring those down and try to follow uh, a, a diet eating pattern with high fruit, high vegetables, seeds, nuts, sea vegetables as well, include those um, spices, herbs, so incru include lots of those. Iodine you can get from your sea vegetables. Omega-3s, your anti-inflammatories, you can get from seeds and sprouts and legumes. Then look at things that stimulate. So as I said, stimulants include your sugars and your salts and also caffeine, trying to bring down the caffeine content. Although caffeine can be good for you in certain small amounts, try not to have too much of them. You can include herbal teas as well. Chamomile, um, what are the teas? Lavender tea, this is a Solomon seal tea. So you, you can include a, a whole range of different teas as well. You get burdock root tea, which is also very effective. Green tea as well. So you get lots of different uh, herbal remedies and herbal products that can really support your body and help your body to prevent disease. They can also be used in the treatment thereof, but their primary focus is prevention and lessening the symptoms. If you choose to go with a conventional treatment, it will lessen the symptoms. It will boost your body. It will help you get through it more easily, more quickly, and you will not have all the negative side effects and symptoms. And there are better outcomes, better treatment outcomes when you go with a, a, a lifestyle that's more plant orientated, when you are consuming more plants, spending time in nature, exercising, getting fresh air, because pollution is also one of the causative factors in cancers. So look at whole foods, lots of spices, herbs, Lots of fruit, vegetables, sea vegetables, especially as well, seaweed, sea moss, kelp, exercise, lots of exercise, lots of water, clean, fresh water, teas, herbal teas, fruit teas, then fresh air, fresh water. So you want sunlight as well. So all of these you have to put together. So if you look at, at a, an, an acronym, you want nutrition, exercise, water, temperance so you want to balance you want sunlight you want religion you want to believe in something a positive frame of mind believe in god positive frame of mind fresh air then you want to rest sleep as well then you want to manage your time that you don't stress too much so i hope this has been beneficial uh, if you have more information please pop it down below if you need consultation Please tell me, there are links in here as well where you can contact me. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like it, subscribe, share it around. Uh, I'm always available for, for comments or for consultation. Please let me know. And as always, to God be the glory and stay healthy.